So, what FSR3 is, in case you're not sure, Upscaler and our uh, performance enhancer that integrates into games, which can double and in some cases triple your frame rate. Also includes frame generation. FSR3 frame generation. It's pretty incredible. It's absolutely crazy. You turn on FSR3 frame generation. Awesome! A free and open source button to double my frame rate! Hell yeah! No, definitely not. Let me explain. As the developer of FSR3 Upscaling for Unity, I know my fair share of how upscalers work. Their pros, their cons, and why they are awesome nonetheless. Spoiler alert, they make your game look from this to this. FSR 3's frame generation has been out for quite a while now, and it's been the number one most requested update for my asset. And you ask, I deliver. For the last couple of weeks, I've been experimenting with integrating frame generation. Obviously, the first hurdle was to get all the techy shader stuff into Unity and working. Once that was done, it was Unity integration time. But first, we need a bit of background information on what frame generation actually does. Let's say we have a game that is rendering at 60 frames per second. Now we get two frames right after each other. For example, frame one and frame two. And this is what the magical frame generation algorithm does. It grabs information from frame one and frame two and generates frame 1.5, which is exactly between frame 1 and frame 2. For the keen viewer, yes, this indeed provides us with a massive issue. Normally, when a game engine is done rendering a frame, it pushes it to the screen as fast as it can. But if frame generation creates a frame 1.5 when frame 2 has been pushed to the screen, then why would we even need frame 1.5? Because we'd be going backwards. And so for frame generation to work, we need to offset the rendering from displaying the frames to screen. When frame 2 has finished rendering, we quickly generate frame 1.5 and display that frame instead of frame 2. To keep things simple for this example, we'll say that frame generation doesn't add extra rendering time to generate frame 1.5. This means that if we slap each generated frame between each normally rendered frame, our frame rate will be doubled. It will now be 120 instead of just 60. Ah, oh, yeah, epic. That's epic, right? Right? <laughs> well, of course, the tech is super epic, but we're not done yet because this will feel very bad. The normally rendered frames take real render time, the generated frames do not. And while your monitor tools will say the frame rate doubled, the results will feel jerky and stuttery. And it's actually even worse because, well, for my example, I said frame generation doesn't have an extra rendering cost. But it does, making the jerkiness even worse. Of course, the super smart minds at AMD work tirelessly Hell yeah. to try to fix this by doing super smart asynchronous stuff that I'm definitely not smart enough for it to understand and I won't even try explaining it. Hey, what's that? Is that a like button? One thing I do know is that even if we fix the horrible frame pacing, we will always render one frame behind the actual rendering which means that the ever existing input lag has now increased with the extra frame time delay. Casual gamers with casual gaming hardware generally have an average input lag of around 40 milliseconds. Depending on the person, anything above 50 milliseconds becomes really noticeable. When your game is running at 60 FPS, then one frame takes 16.7 milliseconds to render. This means that frame generation increases the input lag to around 65.7 milliseconds, which is a lot. This is probably also the reason why AMD suggests to only use frame generation when the FPS is at least 60 or higher. The higher the frame rate, the less input lag and the better frame generation will feel. So does that mean that frame generation is a total bust for casual gamers expecting to increase their frame rate from 20 to 40? 
Probably, yeah. But in my tests, I did notice something very interesting. So we now know that frame generation's ideal situation is a beast PC, a high refresh monitor, and a game that is pumping out 144 frames per second. In these cases, players often disable vSync and let their fancy variable refresh rate monitors fix all their screen tearing. But us normal casual gamers with a normal 60 Hz monitor often enable vSync to get rid of that annoying screen tearing. One downside of vSync is that if a game can't reach the 60 frames per second, to match the refresh rate of the monitor, the game will downtune to half the monitor's refresh rate, so 30 in this case. Without vSync, the PC would be able to push out anything between 40 and 55 FPS, for example. But with vSync, this is locked to 30. <laughs> and we gamers really don't like 30 frames per second. But now something epic happens when you enable frame generation. We now know that frame generation almost doubles your frame rate. You won't feel it because, as we talked about earlier, low frame rate is, well, the worst case scenario for frame generation to run. But because of these few extra interpolated frames, the PC can now push out enough frames to match the 60 Hz of the monitor, allowing VSync to lock out 60 FPS making things much smoother. But no matter how well it works, it is still the most requested feature for my Unity upscalers, and who am I to stand in the way of developers wanting to integrate the tech? So, without further ado, I present you with the ultra pre-alpha version of frame generation. It, of course, has all the issues of input lag and frame pacing, and Unity wouldn't be Unity if it made things easy. So all the fancy, ultra-smart tricks that the people at AMD concocted will not work in Unity. Because, well, its rendering is a complete black box. And so I'll have to think of my own creative ways to fix the frame pacing issues and minimize the input lag. I am currently prototyping a way to split the normal rendering of Unity over two frames by changing the near and far clipping planes for each frame. This makes the total rendering of each frame half as long, which is great for the frame pacing and the frame rate. But don't get your hopes up yet. It's still far from being published, since AMD made frame generation a DirectX 12 and Vulkan only feature. I'll have to pull out all the shenanigans once more to be able to get it to run on DirectX 11. Because Unity developers all know and love DirectX 11, and Unity really sucks at rendering in DirectX 12. And as a cherry on top of everything, if and when I get FSR 3's frame generation to work, I will also add it to my other upscaler assets, DLSS and XS. All right, enough babbling, no time to lose. I've got a feature to build, and I'm sure you also got better things to do than listening to me. For example, liking this video. I hope you're also dying to get your hands on frame generation for all your games, just like me. So, once again, I hope to see you again next week. Frame generation is a hoax. Believe it in false hoax. They keep us on the ropes. It's all just 30 frames and jokes They say it's cutting edge tech Promises they can't back Look at the generated frames So fake it's just a big mistake Looking at you hey and D Dominic has glitches in every scene Pixels so bad and stutters unforeseen Feels like a shadow dream Trust